Kimmy, you're in your home city today. What are you calling for with this march? We're basically saying that the negotiations are not going anywhere. There is a lack of ambition, a lack of urgency, and this march is really about trying to bring a message of sanity, a message of urgency to the ministers that are arriving today at the end of the first week of the negotiations. So right now, if we leave Durban with the Kyoto being buried here, it will be a betrayal of our children and grandchildren's future. But more importantly, we need to ensure that we lay the foundation for a fair, ambitious and legally binding treaty right here and get on beyond talking, talking, talking to investing in a green economy to shift away from fossil fuels, but also to do it in a way that is good for the environment, but also good for jobs, good for poverty and good for peace and security in the future. And you're involved in the anti-apartheid struggle in this city. Do you think it's uh, comparable to this struggle? Well, this struggle of averting catastrophic climate change is incomparable to any other struggle that's been fought. All the other struggles affected one country, apartheid affected us in South Africa, or maybe a group of countries. Climate catastrophe affects every single human being on this planet. So in that sense, the struggle on to avert catastrophic climate change is much more huge, much more cross-cutting, much more global. But what I hope will be the commonality is just as during the struggle against apartheid, we never thought we would get a breakthrough solution and people pushed and pushed and pushed, even though the cards were stacked against us and suddenly things move forward. I hope the same thing will happen in the negotiations where everybody is pessimistic and think it cannot move forward. I hope maybe the spirit of the history of resistance in this country uh, might have some limited impact on the negotiations and we can get some sort of miracle outcome because right now it looks like it's going to take a miracle to get the progress that we need there. The struggle against apartheid really energised people around the world. Do you see the struggle against yes. climate change happening in the same way? Absolutely and I think I want to pay big tribute to young people around the world because young people get it, they are engaged, they are leading and we uh, need to create more space for young people to actually emerge in leadership. I think the current bunch of adult political uh, business and adult leaders generally are the biggest bunch of losers we have. I would say to young people, don't accept that you are leaders of tomorrow. Ex assert that you are leaders of today. Step forward. Take, 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 take leadership. Nice. <laughs> you got yourself arrested on a, an Arctic oil rig earlier this year. You've said the negotiations aren't making progress. Is that kind of action going to be the thing that pushes us forward? I think generally right now we have to have peaceful but active civil disobedience and non-violent direct action. I anticipate the Arab Spring, the Indignados, the Occupy movement and so on is showing that citizens have had enough with the dominance of our political processes, the decisions we make about our environmental future and so on are being taken by big corporations, they've captured power and many of the political leaders sitting in power are basically puppets of big polluting corporate interests. So there's no question that we have to intensify our resistance and that resistance has to include our willingness to put ourselves, our lives on the line and our willingness to go to prison if necessary. On Kern Energy, the good news is, as we yeah, yesterday we heard that Kern Energy is not going back to the Arctic, they didn't find oil and they are their share price has plummeted, so there must be a god somewhere up there. <laughs> Thank you very much.